Hi friends, welcome to a guru channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about performance characteristics of an instrument. For every instrument, the characteristics of instrument should be known in order to choose that instrument for a particular application. The treatment of an instrument and measuring system characteristics can be divided into two distinct characteristics one is static characteristics the second one is dynamic characteristic coming to static characteristics as name indicates so these are the characteristics of an instrument which measures a constant value with respect to time nothing but that is called it as the static calibration the instrument which measures the constant value all the static performance characteristics are obtained in one form or another by a process is called static calibrations the simple code for remembering so these characteristics are all of us know such intended curve is top of the world in the field of cricket we will use sachin tendulkar as a code for remembering static characteristics in early days the name of sachin tendulkar was sachin ramesh tendulkar that we will use here the code is simple epic srt ljr st epic means top of the world so we know sachin tendulkar is top of the world in the field of cricket so srt sachin ramesh tendulkar so later zero run innings renamed it as sachin tendulkar so here we are saying about a small story so initially sachin name was sachin ramesh tendulkar so later zero running run innings he renamed his name as sachin tendulkar so that was an assumption so here epic so a means accuracy p means precision e error and s sensitivity or resolution t threshold l linearity z zero drift or reproducibility s span or scale range t tolerance at the end dead time and dead zone so these are the 12 static characteristics of an instrument once again the code is epic top of the world sachin ramesh tendulkar letter zero running innings renamed as sachin tendulkar in this each letter is a characteristics of an instrument so we will see one by one so first one is accuracy so we know so accuracy is nothing but the closeness with which an instrument reading approaches the true value true value of a quantity being measured so if an instrument measures exactly the true value of a quantity so that instrument is 100% accurate and second one is precision in the old epic a means accuracy p means precision so precision precision is simply it is a measure of reproducibility of an instrument so here we can see the difference between or or it is a, an analogy between uh, accuracy and precision in the first diagram so here if you are hitting a target means that is you are 100% accurate okay in first diagram we are not hitting the target all the hits are not hitting at the target it is not accurate low accuracy and 
so there is no reproducibility that's why it is low precision also for second one so here is reproducibility is there all the hits are at the same place that means it is high precise but they are far away from the target that means it is low accurate see here so it is high accurate all the hits are very near to the target high accuracy but there is no reproducibility then it is low precision the last one is all target all hits are hitting the target that means high accurate and there is a reproducibility then it is high precision so here accuracy guarantees precision because if an instrument is accurate uh, for any number of times it should measure the true value there must be a reproducibility of a true value if there is a reproducibility then that instrument is high precise but precision not guarantee accurate that we can see in the second diagram precision is there but there is no accuracy third one is error so we know simply error is nothing but it is a difference between the true value and measured value so error is measured in terms of static error the static error is the difference between the measured value and true value it is represented by gamma a gamma a is equal to am minus at so if you know an error of an instrument some errors we can't avoid so there we will apply static correction static correction is is, is equal to negative of static error and in some instrument we cannot avoid the static error that's why so while we are purchasing an instrument the instrument manufacturer gives the limiting error of that instrument that means that is the guarantee error that guarantee error is expressed in terms of limiting error or absolute or relative static error the absolute error as a percentage of true value is so relative static error is equal to a minus 80 by 80 that means it is a static error with respect to the true value and the fourth characteristic is sensitivity so sensitivity is nothing but it is a ratio of infinitely small change in output to the infinitely small change in input inverse sensitivity is called deflection factor nothing but if you are taking an instrument an ammeter the input is measure and nothing but current the output is the deflection so sensitivity is nothing but for what amount of current the deflection is going to happen sensitivity is nothing but for a small changes in input there should be a large output then we can say that instrument is highly sensitive so inner sensitive is nothing but the deflection factor the next is, is resolution the smallest quantity that we can measure with certainty is call it as the resolution so resolution can be understand by this small example here so here i am taking a pmmc voltmeter has a uniform scale with 100 divisions the full scale reading is 200 volts and one tenth of scale can be estimated with fair degree of certainty determine the resolution of the instrument so again and the resolution is nothing but the smallest increment in input which can be detected with certainty how much a small quantity of input we can measure with certainty so here for given pmmc voltmeter there are 100 divisions and full scale reading is 200 volts that means 2 volts per 1 division and we can measure 1 tenth of 1 tenth of division with a certainty nothing but 1 tenth of 2 volts is 0.2 volts that is called it as the resolution the smallest quantity that we can measure with certainty next one is threshold threshold is nothing but the instrument input is increased very gradually from zero there will be some minimum value below 
which no output can be detected. So this minimum value is defined as threshold of the instrument. Nothing but if an ammeter measures the current up to 2 amperes there will be no deflection from 2 amperes to 100 amps then the full scale of that ammeter is 100 amps I am assuming the full scale value of that ammeter is 100 amps but it, it the pointer deflection starts from 2 amps only so then the 2 amps is called as the threshold value the minimum value of the input should be given to an instrument in order to respond that we will call it as a threshold from that point only the pointer starts deflection and the next one is the linearity so it is one of the most important characteristics as far as an instrument measuring system is concerned so because linearity is very much considerable for an instrument there should be an output which should vary linearly with respect to the input okay. but with some, uh, for uh, an instrument linearity instead of linearity they will represent the li non-linearity of that instrument for particular points so that can be expressed like this so non-linearity is nothing but the maximum deviation of the output from the idealized straight line idealized straight line is nothing but it is a linear characteristics the maximum deviation of the output from the idealized straight line divided by actual reading into 100 that we will call it as the non-linearity next one is zero drift zero drift as name as name indicates when the input is zero the output shows some output shows some deflection if the input is from five units but output shows seven seven units if the input is 10 units output shows 12 units like that there should always the two divisions deflection so that we will call it as the the zero drift so these are the nominal characteristics from zero to full scale reading but instead of showing this value so the drift is happen because the some mechanical characteristics of the devices used in the instrument so this is called it as the zero drift the drift is always present and span drift as name indicates this drift varies with respect to the span if we are not measuring any value there will be no drift the output is zero input is zero if you are measuring the half scale value then there will be some drift likewise if you are reaching the full scale value the drift also increases that we will call it as the span drift the combination of span drift and zero drift the characteristics will be like this the next one is reproducibility so it is the degree with which a given value may repeatedly measured a perfect reproducibility means the instrument has no drift in order to calculate the zero drift or span drift we are going to measure a quantity repeatedly so if it if it is produces the same reading for every time then it has a perfect reproducibility a span is nothing but it is the difference between the so maximum value to the minimum value a span is also called it as the scale range if a voltmeter can measures 0 to 100 volts the scale range is 100 minus 0 100 volts so dead time so it is a, a minimum amount of time taken by the instrument to respond that is called it as the dead time the minimum time taken by the instrument to respond is called it as the dead time that might be the time taken to overcome the inertia of the instrument then 
limited range up to some range the instrument will not respond so that we will call it as the dead range so these are the static characteristics of an instrument next we will see the dynamic characteristics in the upcoming videos thank you thank you having your time